then I wake up in the morning and uh, and I feel my foot and I think, no, it's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. So I'm just going to go out again. So I go out again and again and again. And I've been out running every day. Yesterday, I wanted to test out a new pair of runner sandals that I bought. So I was out twice yesterday. So living the dream. I'm still doing the exercises, but um, yeah, it's, it's incredible. Okay. What are the running sandals, did you say? What are oh, yeah. So I... I've been running in, uh, you, you, you know, Vibra Five Fingers, uh, Warachis, you know, homemade running sandals for years. Okay. So um, there's 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 quite a there's quite a famous site which sells uh, running sandals, very expensive. And I found these basically same running sandals for for a, for about ten percent of the price in a local store. So I just bought them, took them out for a, a quick spin yesterday, and. Uh, and uh, enjoy, enjoy myself. Okay, okay, so that's interesting. So the sandals, are they like, just like how I think of sandals? Or do we, I don't know, in the United States, I think of sandals as like these things that are just like, like almost nothing. Yeah, well, that's exactly what they are, yeah. That's, <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's okay. exactly it, yeah. The first, best, the first pair that I had are made out of old tires. So this is apparently how they do it in uh, in, in South America, and okay. then they weren't quite good enough because the stones kept getting into the sides, and so um, so I, I bought a kit. And okay. you know, there's nothing in the world like running in Warachis. It's amazing. You've got to try it. You know, until you try it, you just don't understand it. Well, yeah, maybe. Uh, I'm not a big runner anyway, so uh, I'm not too worried about that at this point. But that's it. So, what were you doing? Oh, by the way, I'm I'm recording already. So yeah, I'll, just edit, I'll, just, I'll, just, I'll just edit things in any way. Yeah, yeah, fine. Thing. Okay. Uh, no formal introductions or anything like that. It's just gonna everything will come up during the course of the discussion. Yeah, sure. So, what did I have? What were you wearing when doing the PRI techniques? Because I know I remember on the questionnaire, like you you wrote that you, you wanted to wear more minimal shoes. And that was not, yeah, yeah, yeah. and that was not a negotiable topic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. And of course, yeah, well, and of and of course, so much of this is sensing the ground. So, yeah, yeah. You know, from my experience, most people need something a little bit more, not for support, but something that will give their brain better sensory input from the ground, especially that left heel on the right arch. Uh, so, have you been? Are you one of the few that can actually make? minimalist work for you so i i basically i i i basically bought these trainers here which are, are kind of like um fit because you sent me a document didn't you about what kinds of trainers yeah. would work with a, a tough heel on the back doesn't fold so easy and so on yeah so i bought these and then whenever we had a session i wore these okay, okay. and then whenever i did the techniques i just did them in my bare feet you did. So I was just lying to you, really, just to wow. say, yeah, 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 I'm, I'm following all the advice. But actually, I was actually just doing them in my bare feet. <laughs> but it's okay. correct, so, you know. Hey, whatever works. And, <laughs> and that's the important thing. You know, I know that I can get people's bodies neutral. All those tests can change. The moment I have them sense something different, which is not the outside of the right foot. <laughs> so we know that you were only, were real, and you were completely aware of this because you wrote it on the questionnaire. You wrote, I feel my weight because let me, uh, so let me just make sure that anyone watching will understand. You have had some major surgeries on the outside of your right foot, right calf, tibia. So why don't I just mention what that was all about? So, um, so I'd been dealing with issues on the right side. I mean, even when I was sort of 10 or 11, I was always going over onto the right, uh, 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 over on my right ankle onto the right side. And then when I got to around about 16, I mean, I was fit as a butcher's dog when I was 16. I was really bloody fit. Um, but I remember getting a, 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 an Achilles injury and I, and I had no idea at the time. That's the kind of first injury that I ever remember that I got from sport. I had no idea that it was, I, I kind of thought in my head, right, I'll just go to the physio, 
you know, they have shops on the roads next to the butchers and the bakers and all that type of stuff. So oh. I'll go in there, I'll pay some money, they'll fix me, I'll carry on and we'll all live happily ever, ever after, you know. Yeah. I had no idea it was going to be like another 21 years of, of kind of injuries yeah. and surgeries and, and before I actually got to the bottom of anything. So... Um, these so it, it was generally things just, on the outside. Let me just point something out. There's a great Guns N' Roses song called 14 Years. And I always think of this because it says 14 years of silence, 14 years of pain, 14 years that are gone forever and I'll never have again. And yeah, well, I, absolutely. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. I, I had no idea. You know, I was so ignorant at the time, you know, and I just thought, oh, these guys are the experts. They'll just fix me. Yeah. And I'll just carry on, and that just that just didn't happen. And it was always injuries on the outside. It was always it was like IT band stuff. So it was like, you know, I was foam rolling like there's no tomorrow. And then it was like, uh, no, 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 you need to you need to stretch this right this right glute on the outside. Uh -huh. um, and then and then it was like, no, no, you don't. You need to stabilize that one. And then it was like, no, the pelvis is is unequal. Yeah. So you need to stretch that one and strengthen the other one. And then when that didn't work, the physios said, no, do it the other way around then, you know, strengthen that one and stretch that one. <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. none of it ever worked, you know? Yeah. And, um, and so um, I'm trying to think of the order of things. Um, I um, realized that there was some rotation in my tibia. So I realized that my right foot was kind of sticking out slightly to the right mm -hmm. uh, when my knee was pointing forwards. And I thought, I wonder if that's like the reason why I'm getting this uh, pain in my knee is because uh, I'm trying to force my knee over my foot, mm -hmm. and that's not that, that that's not working because that's not the way it's set up structurally. Mm -hmm. um, so that's when I started getting into minimalist running mm -hmm. because the way I saw it was, if you're landing on a bent leg underneath you, it doesn't really matter where your foot lands. Whereas if you're heel striking, you've almost got to roll from the heel to the toe and your knees got to go straight over it. So it made a bit of sense to me. Mm -hmm. um, but as soon as I started running minimalist, I just started getting this pain in the outside of my right foot. And that basically plagued me for probably the last 15 years. Yeah. Um, I, I ended up, I went everywhere. I went to, um, I've been to, I, I've done everything. I like, I've, I have been to everyone. I've been to top physios. Like if you ever go into a physio room and they've got uh, football shirts on the walls, oh, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. sports people and all that, like they are they are the most arrogant ignoramus out there. They they will they will fleece you for your money. They charge over the odds. It's like people who are, are confident in their ability don't put all that kind of stuff on 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 their walls. It's like they're trying to they're trying to make up for something. They'll try and sell your insoles. I've had loads of that. I've had, I've had like everybody wants to sell me insoles. <laughs> And, uh, and it's always your fault when they don't work as well. It's like, yeah, oh, yeah, well, yeah. you should have worn. Or, well, you didn't say you were going to run in them, so you need the red ones, not the blue ones, or you need the titanium ones. Or, yeah. well, actually, you, you didn't say you were going to run, so actually you need one that's more flexible. And you need a, a different shoe because, obviously, like a tarmac road just isn't firm enough for an insole, you know? So you need yeah. a firmer shoe. And it's just, it's always your fault, you know? Yeah. So, um I went to, I did uh, Rolfing, I did some Rolfing, I did the 10 series with that, that seemed to make a lot of sense to me at the time, but that, that didn't do anything. I, I, I did uh, Feldenkrais, uh, Hannah Somatics, uh, which, which did actually, uh, uh, quite similar in some senses to PRI, it did yeah. actually change uh, my posture in a lot of ways, that was some uh, back pain, but never touched this, this pain on the outside of my right foot. Mm -hmm. Um, I did acupuncture. You know, I remember sitting in this in this guy's in this kind of Orientalist room with all these Buddhist statues looking at me. Mm. You know, I looked like something like I had a Hellraiser with all these pins sticking out my head. And I was saying to the guy, "Why is this pin in my ear going to make a difference to 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 my foot?" And the guy was like, "Well, it's all the energy and the flow. Yeah. Didn't make any difference whatsoever." So I did all these things and then I ended up going to the doctor and I said, look, nothing is working here. And this doctor uh, referred me to someone who said, well, you were born with club feet. So your feet were uh, talipes, so your feet were, were pointing up towards your body. And with a lot of people who, who had that foot structure when they were born, uh, you have really tight Achilles. Mm -hmm. um, so 
what I can do, I can do a myofascial release where I'll cut into the, the calf muscle and I'll cut away at the fascia and, I'll, and, it, and that will, in and of itself, that will lengthen the Achilles and this will sort all your problems. Mm-hmm. And I was like, well, but, but why, 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 will that, why will that affect? Uh, I'm either bearing too much weight on the right, on the outside, or the peroneal tendon is working hard to try and pronate me inwards, or something, something's going on down there. Yeah. So why, what, how, how, like, what's the mechanism? And this guy was basically like, listen, I, I, I'm, I'm the surgeon here. I'm the doctor, okay? You're the patient. Right. You don't need to know this type of thing. So yeah. there's nothing else on the table. I've done everything else. So fine. So I went, I had that surgery. Uh, four weeks later, I was, I was walking about pretty well. A couple of weeks after that, I was like walking at a brisk pace. At eight weeks, I went out for a run. Exactly the same, the same pain in the foot. Mm. Um, got an absolute waste of time. All, all I got from for, for me time there really is a big scar on the back of my calf. So yeah, and, again, that was a- I went, I remember when you showed me that picture, my original instinct was like, oh boy. Because what- Well, yeah, well, that was the, no, that was the, that was the second surgery that I oh, had. So I oh, went off like, and I went back to more physios and I spent more money and all these people say they'll help you. Oh. And, uh, and they never did. And so I ended up back in hospital. Some guy, and uh, good enough, the guy said, I can, I can correct um, this um, externally rotated tibia. So Which is said, North and and so yeah, just so people realize, an externally rotated right tibia is completely normal in this left AIC pattern. And I've mentioned it in other videos. I just want people to realize that this doctor was seeing externally rotated tibia. He just didn't know what the origin of it was. It was just compensation yeah. for the yeah. patterned yeah. above Absolutely. it and the patterned femurs above it. And so, eighty percent of the people out there will have a, at least slightly externally rotated right tibia. Some are just more than others. And you'll feel the weight on the outside of your foot, like you are. Yeah. I'm, I'm absolutely convinced it was a, it was a compensation thing. Oh, it was. And, yeah. I used to, and, I, and I used to row at school when I was younger. We were quite a, quite a successful uh, crew, quite a successful quad. And obviously, when you're rowing, your feet have got to be straight mm. on the plate in front of you, and your knees go over, over your feet. And I don't ever remember when I was sort of 15, 16, there being any movement of my heel. I don't ever remember there being any rotation there. I would have noticed, I would have wondered why my heel kept trying to go in. So it, it happened at some point between sort of 16, 15 or 16 and yeah. 25. Yeah. So there's definitely been a compensation. It wasn't always there. Anyway, this guy uh, breaks my tibia in surgery, uh, breaks the fibula, it's a ring on the top, a ring on the bottom, and some adjusters. So basically, over, I think it was 38 days, a millimeter a day, I separated the two ends of the bone, um, turned them, just angled them slightly, and put them back down again. So, yeah, so pr- pr- pretty major surgery, like, yeah, yeah. Oh, I yeah. didn't realize it was like that. That you saw. Yeah, yeah. Jeez. Oh, okay, <laughs> all right, so, so... All right, so that must have been the, okay, that was the picture I saw. And again, I looked at it and my original, my thought was, shit. Like, I wonder if this is recoverable because they've kind of, they operated on a patterned body that would not, like, they're not lying you down and saying, oh, hey, you're in a pattern. That's why it looks like that. They think you legitimately have bones that are like, that just somehow ended up like that, or like you were born yeah, yeah, yeah. not sure. realizing that if you correct the pattern, you can undo the excessive, you can do the, you can undo the excessiveness of the externally rotated uh, tibia. It doesn't, and, and, the, and, the, and it doesn't even have to be, in fact, I would say almost the vast majority of people will always have at least slightly an externally rotated tibia. It's completely normal because that's part of being a human. It's just when it gets excessive, that becomes the issue and you feel the weight on the outside of your right foot, that foot stays supinated and you cannot shift to the left because your brain forgot how to pronate that right foot that pushes you to the left side. And so you contacted me, I guess you saw videos, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so what was your first, some, a lot of this when people have never heard of postural restoration before, I'm so deep into it that I just take 
I take everything for granted, like, oh yeah, that's obvious. But <laughs> when we had our first session, did you think I was full of shit at all? Or no, 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 not at all, no, because I mean, I, I've spent probably, I, I mean, maybe to some degree, because everyone I've seen, whether it's been in Feldenkrais, somatics, yoga, acupuncture, Pilates, all of it, you know, they, I've spent a lot of money and yeah. that's, you know, and I've probably spent over £10,000 over the years when I added up, you know, because I was absolutely determined to find the solution. Yeah. And essentially that's money that I've taken off my family's table, you know. Yeah. I don't think that any one of those people has been dishonest. Right. I think they all genuinely believe in what they're doing. And right. And they're trying to make a business and they're living for themselves. And so right. I don't feel aggrieved by it. But yeah. when I saw your videos, I was at a stage where I'd already agreed with myself decided that i would not spend any more money i would not throw any more money down the drain yeah um but when i started uh, watching the videos um two two things really that that, that sprung to mind the, the first was you know this guy is slightly obsessed with, with this stuff right <laughs> slightly <laughs> yeah <laughs> that kind of like that kind of reminded me of myself a little yeah, bit yeah 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 I've got physio textbooks coming out of my ears on my bookshelf here and stuff. So I was like, yeah, absolutely. And then I thought as well, you know, you've got that many videos on YouTube. I just thought um, you're very open and transparent because you, you're, you talk about yourself and your eyesight a lot and what things that have helped with things that haven't. Mm -hmm. and I thought this guy's got nothing to hide. So then when I spent, when I sent you an email and you said, you know, because I think you've actually done a video on this where everybody thinks, their pelvis is rotated the other way. <laughs> yeah. So I sent you an email falling into that trap saying, I, I think it's quite cute what you're saying, but I think I'm in the other way. And then obviously you come back to me and said, no, 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 you're absolutely, this is all part of this pattern. Without a shadow of a doubt, you're in this pattern. So I kind of added then in writing, I was like, no, this guy, this isn't wishy-washy. This is not somebody saying, yeah, in a roundabout way, like, yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure we could do something. You know, like the guy who operates on my car, oh, it solves a myriad of problems. I don't really know how. It just does. It wasn't like that. It was like, yeah, that's all part of this pattern, and we can definitely make some impact on that. And so I thought, you know what? Yeah, yeah, have a go at it. Like, 